with Lacoochee River Electric Cooperative, member owned, community focused. Hello and welcome to the Turkey Man Show. <laughs> I'm Kevin Vaughn, or better known here at REC as the Turkey Man. I'm a long time with the Coochie Lyman. Welcome to the Turkey Man Show. Today I'm sitting down and speaking with a fellow journeyman line technician. Hello, Manny. Welcome to the Turkey Man Show. Hello, Kevin. Thank you for having me. So let's get started. So uh, let's start with you uh, telling us about yourself. Well, Kevin, I'm 41 years old. I was born and raised in Dade City. Uh, graduated Pasco High in 2002. I'm married. I have two boys. My oldest just graduated. So awesome. Time's flying by. You, you don't flying. really realize how everything, <laughs> everything moves so quick. But That's right. he's graduated, and uh, he's actually enlisted into the Air Force, so he'll be leaving here soon well, to serve his good. country. We're, we're, we'll, we thank him for his service. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate be, that. Awesome. So how long have you been a lineman here at uh, REC, uh, and what district are you currently at? Well, funny you say that. I've been here 19 and a half years. I just here recently transferred over to operations at the Trilby office. But prior to that, I was at one Pasco. Pasco. How, so how long were you? I guess you were there. What almost nineteen years in at? Oh yeah, nineteen and a half at, years at one Pasco. At one Pasco, and, I started my career there. Yep. And now you moved to the Trilby district. Yep. So those districts are a little bit different. It's quite a bit different. Oh yeah. As, aspect of the job there. So. Yep. A whole a whole different world compared to the work we do at Trilby, compared to the work we do at one Pasco. Right. It's uh now. I've, the contrast with me is I've, I've been at Trilby the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have quite the same perspective as you would coming from uh, the one Pasco district. It's a little bit different work. So it's the same in some, some aspects, but different in others. So, oh yeah. We yeah. deal with a lot more, a uh, lot more trouble calls on a day to day basis over there. We deal with the consumers a lot more than you guys do. Right. Uh, some of our trainings a little different. We right. uh, get to utilize more equipment on a daily the uh, Dynatel, Thumper, uh, Service Saver, a lot of that stuff you guys don't really get to use. Right, for trouble calls. For trouble yeah. calls, right. but yeah, but definitely uh, definitely different. That's right. So you, you've you been here in Dade City a long time. Uh, what what made you want to become a lineman? Honestly, uh, when I graduated high school, uh, my plan was to be a, a chef. So I actually did a culinary arts prior to this. Took a couple of courses and... Uh, the funding wasn't there. I couldn't get grants to go, so I kind of changed my perspective of what I wanted to do. And uh, I've always liked tinkering with stuff yeah. growing up, taking stuff apart, putting it back together, right? Uh, working on engines. So I got into kind of the mechanic field of... Well, that's quite a quite a contrast, culinary yeah. arts versus uh, being a lineman. It's uh, uh, oh, yeah. quite, quite a different uh, avenue that you took. But uh, Oh, yeah. So... Uh, yeah. I actually started working at a part store here, a local part store, and uh, moved myself up from uh, over the counter to a part sales manager. I was a part sales manager for for a few years, right? And uh, <clears throat> we hired a couple of new guys. They were working under me, and one of the guys actually got hired on here. Oh, that's oh, that's cool. So you kind of so uh, heard I kind of it that yeah, way. Yeah, I kind of fell yeah. into it that way. Right. And uh, when he got hired on here, he come back to AutoZone, and he's he was telling me uh, about you know, his new job, his new adventure, and wanted right. me to apply. So he brought me an application. I filled it out, and uh, the rest is history. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here well, now. I've been here, like I said, 19 years. 19 so. years, going well, on so 20. It's, a, it's definitely been a good career. So how do you feel about being a rec lineman then? I mean, that you kind of alluded to it a little bit. And I truly love the work. Uh, being, like I said, there's a lot of building that goes on. Like I right. said before, uh, I like building stuff, so this gives me an opportunity to start from scratch. You see it from from when there's nothing, just a piece of ground, a, right. a pole and line, and vice versa. Sometimes you, we do underground, so you're setting up subdivisions like we're currently right. doing now. We're setting pads and transformers and pulling in conductor and terminating. Well, I know for me it's it kind of gives you that sense of accomplishment. Oh, yeah, yeah. From, like you say, from uh, just a staking sheet that kind of lines out the job we have to build. And then when we're finished, you're you're looking at a overhead primary feeder or underground subdivision that's been totally built from nothing. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I understand that. Yeah, and you can drive by there and, and be like, look, I did that, I did this, yeah. I installed this. I remember when there was nothing here. Right, exactly. <laughs> kind of like over there in Wesley Chapel back when I started. In 05, uh, there was it was a road to nowhere. There was nothing out there. And now you drive down there, and there's 
outlet malls and right. businesses and hospitals and well, I, I, I got remember that myself. <laughs> I got pictures on my phone that are it's just pasture land. There's nothing there. And uh so our system has definitely grown from when I started to now. So what what do you think are some of the challenges you've had to face? Uh, this job can is is very challenging physically and mentally. Uh, the physical part of it is that you're working in very extreme conditions. That's right. During the day, you're you're in gloves and sleeves. The heat, so, right so the now, heat, especially you gotta, right now in Florida. It's, uh, oh yeah. So you're dealing with that. You got to drink plenty of water. You got to stay hydrated uh, because it can turn sour real quick. You can you can have heat stroke and then you're in a serious problem. And I was just mentioning problem. that the, earlier before the podcast started about how the what it takes to be a lineman, it, there's a lot of demands. I mean, it, it requires a lot. The, the physical demands, the, the mental demands, and uh, so it it's, it's definitely um, can be challenging for sure. Oh, yeah. And, and like I said, the mental part about it is you're taking on this new program that, like what uh, I said, when I started, I, have no, I had no idea what lineman did. I didn't either. <laughs> so I come here, and I yeah. didn't know what a grip was, what a strap jack was. I mean, exactly. everything was Chinese to me. And then... The longer I was in the apprenticeship, the more everything started making sense. And then one year, everything just clicked, and everything you told me, I could understand, and I could tell you right, tell you right, right back the same, and you would know no different. So I've noticed with some of the new guys coming in, uh, what we're doing now is uh, we're taking them out with orientation. We're going over all the equipment and. In all the aspects of the job, of course, they won't retain all that just from, you know, two or three days. But uh, I do believe it helps. Oh, yeah. Actually, matter of fact, last time they had a new hire orientation, I was there with you. And uh, we went over and taught a bunch of stuff as far as climbing. And you had a bunch of equipment laid out. Right. Just trying to explain them what it does. And like you said, like I said, uh, it's probably Chinese to them. They probably don't understand nothing we're telling them. But at least they get to see it. Right. And we kind of take it it. for granted because we been in the industry so long uh but to them it's it's brand new and uh so you know it uh it's needed i think so that's that's good but have you had any experiences that have made you validate your choice to to be a lineman at rec i mean oh yeah yeah i mean here recently i just got to go to hurricane idalia uh yeah. back in august so i yeah. was out there for for about 10 days and to get there and see every day when we got there they had like uh almost their whole system out so they were at like 98 percent Right. total outages and uh then people it was it was devastating there was a lot of that's right a lot of lines down a lot of trees down people lost their homes no food no water and then uh from day one we started there and started restoring power and just to see the the facial expression on the people that we were helping that's right I, i've is having the same experiences over the years if you're here long enough you're going to get sent on Oh yeah, storm duty somewhere, and uh, that's always been one of the things that I've enjoyed is uh, being able to help restore power and bring you know a, a little sense of uh, normalcy back yeah. to to their lives. You to know, a, to a certain yeah. extent, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because everything's tore all tore to pieces. They won't be totally normal, but at least no, they'll have power, no. and then they can. No, it changes an area like that forever. Oh it's, yeah, it's never the same. Do you have any uh, memorable stories you'd like? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, being that I come from a district, we do a little more. Uh, we're more involved with the consumers. I think that's the benefit of being a co-op. We're here to help everybody. Right. Like other utility companies, they're they're for profit, so they'll go out do a trouble call and they'll do the bare minimum to get them back on. Or if they can't get them on, they leave them off or to where they can fix the issue as far as a meter can. So I got a call in Lacucci, uh, elderly lady. We got there and she had partial power. Her meter can was burned up. Some of the lugs were burned up in the meter right. can. And if it was any other utility, they would have disconnected it and went on their way and left her stranded until somebody could go help her. But she was in a position where she couldn't do nothing. She was probably in her 80s, right. late 80s. And uh, I called my supervisor at the time, and, and I explained the situation to him and uh, asked if I could go a little further and help her, you know, replace the lugs in her meter can and get her get her going. And uh, he, he gave me the okay, and we replaced all the parts in the meter can got her got her back in service and she, right. man she was ecstatic like <laughs> we almost like we saved her world that day because she had no idea well, where did, who was going to help her you did save her world that's right so. <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's definitely rewarding just to like i said to see how people react to you when you're there a lot of times they right. hate you because their power's out and then they love you well, when that, your power's back true. on we, we're not always <laughs> viewed favorably sometimes yeah. but uh it's always good to have uh the consumers that that do come out and thank us and uh you know the 
and consumers were able to help like that, it makes makes a big difference for the community. So do you have any advice uh, you might have for somebody thinking about becoming a wreck lineman as somebody's looking to, to join our team? Do uh, you have any advice for uh, somebody uh, new starting out? Oh, yeah, out? yeah. Like I said, if, if, if you're thinking about being a lineman, just uh, – there's a lot of aspects to this job, so you gotta you gotta keep an open mind and uh, be willing to work, work long hours, work in the most extreme conditions. So you gotta That's mentally right. prepare yourself for that. When it's raining, you're restoring <laughs> power. You're not sitting at the house watching TV, and uh, you're gonna sacrifice a lot being away from your family. But uh, it's like I said, it's definitely rewarding. Yeah, there's been times I've I've missed birthday parties uh, and they've never let me forget it <laughs> oh yeah yeah but it is uh it, it, it is a sacrifice at times um away from your family yeah so an apprentice is uh somebody that's going through the program they're here to learn how to become a lineman and once you complete your five years then you become jq which is a journeyman qualified and then if you get promoted then you become a journeyman lineman and that's when you're promoted you 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 get your own truck that's when you get your own truck you get your own crew you're responsible for that apprentice yeah you're responsible for your man and everybody everybody right. else on the crew i'm just going to briefly touch on some of our uh our apprenticeship program because i don't know mm -hmm. if anybody's discussed that on the podcast and like i said this will be kind of an op eye opener for some of the new guys that they are trying to become linemen. Right. Uh, in your first ninety days, you're put on probation, and you got to have a certain amount of stuff accomplished. That's you got to right. have three tests completed. You got to get climbing certified, and then hopefully you can uh, get your uh, permit for your CDL. After that, they give you six months to get your CDL. That's right. And then uh, you got to get Extendo Stick certified. Well, on top of that, you're going to get a task sheet, and on this task sheet, there's about two pages of stuff you got to fill out. That's correct. <laughs> and you got to take a test every month, so you got to be ready to do that too. On top of your task sheet, right? And the journeyman is is responsible in a way that he he has to make sure that the uh, apprentice is keeping up with those oh, tasks, yeah, yeah. Make, make the availability on those tasks and and those kind of things. So it it, it goes both ways. Uh, oh yeah, and then on top of that, you're going to have to do a climbing test every year for the next five years. That's right. So there's going to be a certain task for year one, a certain task for year two, right. and so on and so forth. Right. And our our program's a five year program. It's a five year so, program. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe we have to log in. Um, it's around eleven thousand hours yep. of training mm -hmm. in those five years. Um, that that's a lot of hours. It yep. has to be logged in by that by and, that apprentice. And then when you get to about two and a half years, you get in what they call the gloving program. You still right. get your task sheet. Now you got a gloving sheet that you got to fill out. Right. Yeah. So now there's tasks you got to learn. Uh, you have knowledge and proficiency on these tasks. Right. And you got to get them filled out by your supervisor, by your journeyman. That's correct. And yeah. by me signing off is me saying that I feel comfortable with you going up in the bucket and doing it by yourself. That's right. Safely. We, and we, in a proper time. That's right. And we don't we don't allow any kind of hot work for the first two and a half yep. years. And once they start gloving, then they, they have to be uh, in a bucket or a uh, journeyman has to be next to them yep. in a bucket to be able to start working on those uh, energized tasks. Yep. And then once you do that, then uh, you're going to be in gloves and sleeves pretty much the whole time. So that's right. here comes the physical part of the job where you're right even on uh even on our single phase yeah um, even on single phase um, the apprentice is required to wear their sleeves uh, mm -hmm. until they've been certified yep and then until they take that last test even after the certification so the journeyman might get a little bit of break on a single phase but any multiple phase lines we're, we're still yep. required to wear our sleeves and then you'll go to year three and then your last year, your year four, same thing. You'll have a task sheet. Your year five, you don't have a task sheet anymore. You just have your gloving sheet. So that's going to give you time to fill out those tasks that you got to fill out every year. You got to do your final exam, and then the, that's right. and that's going to determine your pay increase. So it's kind of an initiative to, you know, want to pass your test because if you pass your test, well, you get a raise. That's right. And we do hold you to a higher standard, so you got to score an eighty nine or better to right. pass these quizzes well, they want or these tests. Know, they want you to know the job. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, your life depends on it. Um, the the men around you. Yeah, we all depend on each other. So there's it's really that uh, we know know the know the job. There's not a lot of room for error in the line of work we do. Well, there's, uh, there's no room. <laughs> really, you mess up, you could. Uh... <laughs> I've always said it. 
we can't be like the weather man he's he only has to be right 50 percent of the time we we've got to be right every time oh yeah yeah it could it could cost you uh your life or somebody else's life or, right. or one journeyman told me uh or worse than dead and i was like well what's worse than dead he's like well imagine having to live your life with no arms no legs because you made a a wrong choice right. he's like well i never thought about it that way right that's right so that's the kind of motivation for you to, <laughs> to make learn, learn to the job learn and it properly and, and right. no don't take shortcuts and follow all the safety rules and, and believe it or not a, a an apprentice can depending on his attitude towards that learning in that job can can put a lot of stress on a on a journeyman oh yeah if he if he's the type of person that's not wanting to uh maybe put everything into it like he should you know yeah yeah he can put a lot of stress on german yeah so the apprentices uh, a lot of times uh uh you know can make it if if you what i'm trying to say is if you put everything into it it makes it easier on both oh, yeah. parties yeah. You know? yeah for sure so, the more my apprentice knows the easier my job is because right. I, I don't know you've been doing it for about 26 years and yeah. i'm going on 20 years and when i got promoted back in uh 2013 i went straight to overhead so from 2013 to now i've i've been gloving i've been in, in a bucket gloves and sleeves for right. for a very long time and uh it does make you eerie when you send somebody up there because you don't have control of the situation right when you're behind them you can kind of delegate what they're doing and t- hey don't touch that don't touch this grab this grab that but they'll get to the point where you can send them up there by themselves with another journeyman, and it's it's honestly it's nerve wracking. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and and there's, I, I've noticed so over the years that there's some you feel more comfortable with oh, yeah. than others. So, but yeah, it, it's those guys that are looking to to come to wreck and and start. It's a good career. But, oh yeah, but it's, it's uh it, it is demanding. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's uh very good benefits, good pay. On a second note, we do a very dangerous job, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes you're working in the most extreme conditions, hurricanes, lightning mm-hmm. storms, and you're out there restoring power. Right. And, uh, just, just day-to-day. And times. even day-to-day yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. But don't be uh, don't be intimidated. Uh, just come on out here and uh, That's right. <laughs> just be ready to learn and be ready to work. Well, thank you for being here, and, and thank, thank you, everyone, for listening to the Turkey Man Show. With Lacoochee River Electric Cooperative. Member-owned, community-focused.